All right. So uh, here we are. We've downloaded both the 2006 and 2019 land cover data. Um, got it in my lab folder. And you can see there are zip files. The zip files are over 2.3 gigabytes each. So I'm just going to extract here, seven zip extract here. And you know, that's going to take a minute. They're big files. Let's run, see if we can get both of them going. Um, so hopefully that's going to work out OK. If I look inside of the zip file, which it does let me do. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly. I think this should be extracting a, a geodatabase file, hopefully. Um, OK. So, so that process will take a minute. Um, yeah, so at this point, I can't open them up yet. Let's see that progress going on. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we've got our Pleasant Creek watershed, our background DEM. We can uh, uh, basically, we could start to think about maybe ways that we could visualize uh, this a little bit more elegantly. I could click on land ownership class and give it some transparency maybe so that I can see the topography in the background when I zoom in. Wow, even my computer is a little slow with all this unzipping. OK, um, but yeah, you get the idea. Hopefully. Um, while that is happening, um, I've been cleaning up some things. You'll notice that I don't have my world topographic map on or hillshade on because I don't really want them refreshing my internet all the time and slowing down my computer. In fact, I don't really even want the world hillshade because I've got my own hillshade. I can always remove that. Um, if you know, you can also turn off particular DEMs, because if they're on, but just behind things, it's still trying to draw them. So I've done that for a lot of these, turn them off. Uh, if I turn off the DEM, and we lose our color. So since I got color on color, maybe I want to do that. I'm not sure. But at the same time, I kind of like the way it shows the landscape. Um, and then I've still got my tributaries on. And we can look through interestingly and see where these private land ownerships are. So this area right here, you'll notice I haven't been using LIDAR to save my time. Um, it, but this is the area where uh, UVU's Capital Reef Field Station is. And so it's actually that's UVU's private land was donated for the field station. If you get down below in the lower part of the river, you can see some private land there. There's some kind of grazing lands. And actually, cattle are run up through uh, to these other uh, forest service areas, and BLM lands up here um, at certain times of year. So even though we're in the National Park, uh, grazing cattle are, and or on, are getting pushed back and forth through here on horseback at certain times of the year. If you ever go to the field station, you'll see that. Um, other things maybe to note, as you're looking through here, thinking about the geologic map that you might bring in. I don't have it up here, but there's some a number of things that I could describe uh, about it. Um, one, you can see like all these fractures in the topography here. And I'll even turn off this so you can see that better. Um, those are areas where hard sandstone is outcropping. And so those you might expect, you know, where you have a contrast between that and kind of this other topography over here, which is, tends to be weaker rocks are exposed. So I bet, you know, you might see some topographic changes there in your river profile. As you get uh, up into this uh, area through here, this thing is like basically a big fold. Which the whole thing is, but here we get again harder rocks and you can see the evidence of that because of the canyon through here 
that the river has had to carve. It doesn't lay back on either side like it does here where they have weaker rocks. Um, and so the, the main geologic context that I would look out for changes uh, would be like the boundary between the sandstones and these weak rocks. And then going back to this hard rock here, which is a lime, limestone. And then back here, you can see, um, actually can see a number of linear features running through here. I think there might be a fault, but then there's these flat surfaces that Pleasant Creek is sitting next to. And those are river terraces. Uh, surrounding it, there's other rocks. You can see that where the streams have carved canyons into them. But here it's really flat on the sides. And so that's uh, going to be a section of the stream that uh, has like what we call quaternary alluvium, basically flood deposits or valley deposits that is not rock, but sediment. And then as you move up further, um, you get into this kind of really looks almost like a lunar crater out here. But uh, that stuff is all what we call glacial um, till and glacial outwash. And so I the back in um, the Pleistocene, there was basically huge um, uh, mountaintop glaciers that spilled over the valley here. And they came out to some distance downstream. Uh, I can see kind of the evidence for the glaciation along the where the stream is cutting through at least maybe down to here for sure, but I kind of have suspicion maybe all the way down to here. But when you bring in your geologic map, you'll see that. And so major changes uh, go from volcanics, glacial exposed sediment, um, maybe a little bit of rock here, young river terrace deposits, alluvium, back into rock, including limestone here, mud rocks here, and then sandstones here, and then again, really weak rocks when you get out here. And so where you see those nick points, you know, might be at these contrasts between hard and strong rocks, or might be at places where you have a lot of rivers uh, coming together, like, like right here on the other side of this fold exposure, you get rivers coming from either side, and those those might be areas that you'd expect to see those topographic changes. OK, um, we're still waiting for things to extract. It's a very slow process. Total size might be this going to be like 29 gigabytes. Is that true? Let's go back here and see how big it's getting. Yeah, they're going to get up to 29 gigabytes. That's pretty awful. And so, um, you know, one of the reasons I had said that people could work together on this lab was managing file sizes. Um, and so one person could extract these. And then what we're going to want to do is clearly trim them. The reason they're so big is there national land cover for the entire country, or at least the lower 48 determinous uh, states. Um, so that's going to push our machines even probably to display them. Um, but I think we can handle it. Um, what we're going to want to do is just basically clip those rasters to the area that we're working in. Unfortunately, I don't know. Maybe there was a better way to download this uh, land cover data in a way that we wouldn't have had to download the whole area, but I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to stop this video and uh, come back when this is downloaded.